Hello, so you may or may not know I'm actually working on a museum. I've been speaking about the Museum of Everything Else for a few years now, but I never thought it would, it would actually come to fruition. But lo and behold, due to a convoluted sequence of ups and downs this year, I've actually found myself in a situation where I'm actually working towards opening it. And I know what you're thinking, this is the perfect time to open such a thing. <laughs> Well actually, in the grand scheme of things, I don't see it as a bad time to work towards opening such a thing because I guess it gives it more time to sort of uh, work on it and make it a little bit more, a little bit more funky. It's always good to look at the positives of something like this, right? So the museum is covering all manner of like DIY, experimental and obsolete technologies, all the way from musical creation to science to photography and video and stuff like that. And as my name, look, Mom, no computer suggests, no, there's not gonna be many computers here, but, 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 there is actually a computer museum called the Micro Museum in the same town. So you can make a day out of it. To be honest, it's the result of a rather serious hoarding addiction, but let's just brush that under the rug, shall we? So as somebody who enjoys building reasonably janky machines, there, it only seems right to actually build stuff into the building. And I guess the first permanent fixture for the museum is already built. It's actually the Thousand Oscillator Mega Drone, which I assembled at home and then brought over here to build permanently onto the wall. So if you come here, you can interact with it. Well, today's video is looking at another thing I'm gonna build into the museum. It's not as complicated as a Thousand Oscillator Mega Drone. However, I think it might just be as fun. And it's gonna be a Morse code machine. Morse code being the means of communication through dots and dashes. So recently I managed to come into possession of this Air Ministry Practice Buzzer. It was about £20 on eBay, amazingly enough. Something like this, which is probably about 80 years old and it was used to uh, for people to learn Morse code and practice. It's got headphones here. Uh, it's, it's quite a cool little machine. So yeah, obviously it's made for learning Morse code. Inside here is a tiny little bunch of coils that should oscillate and send a signal through these phone outputs. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to connect the power. The power needs to be connected between these two points right here. So uh, I'm going to see if I can connect a 9 volt battery, just a 9 volt battery so it's not going to be high voltage or anything. I'm going to see if I can neatly connect it to the back. The great thing about it is when it's not actually being used, it doesn't actually use any energy. So just having a little 9 volt battery in the box, just forgotten about, uh, means that it'll only run out of batteries if it's used loads. So it's not going to be a big problem. Now if I wire these up to a 9 volt battery via this turret board, I'm trying to reduce the amount of soldering in this, so uh, if there's an issue, and it's quite quickly fixable. It should be wired in now. So let's just see what this actually does and if it's actually working the way I was expecting it to. <laughs> so you're actually listening to an electromechanical vibration. If you look closely, you will see a spark. You see that? I suspect this hasn't been used for many years, so there was maybe a bit of oxidation buildup. But the more it gets used, hopefully, the more constant the actual note is going to be. Because as you can hear, there is a bit of variation, and I think that should disappear after a little while. That's quite amazing. It's a spark gap that is being created by just a 9 volt battery within that. So that should be able to transmit this oscillation through this cabling without much fuss. So I have about 15 meters of cabling here. Here is the uh, output of it. I'm just going to put it into this big jack right here, which is plugged into just a simple amplifier. <coughs> oh, is that it? You can hear it louder. That's actually coming out the speaker. A fun fact, to shorten like usual phrases, there was actually a number of phrases uh, that were given a certain number. For instance, 73 meant best regards. And guess what 73 is? So that football chant stuff actually came from Morse code. So this is awesome. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in one room and then I'm gonna put this over at the interactive section. So this sound can go through maybe a delay or something. And uh, you know, this person can speak to this person, but right now I only have one, so it's only one way. So 
So I've used a turret board instead of soldering. So, uh, you know, if there's no soldering around and it needs fixing, well, you just need a flat point screwdriver and a nine volt battery and... Hey, hey. Oh yeah, look at that. That is awesome. So now I've figured that out, I need to figure out how to get the wire going over to the second room. Luckily, most of its journey is actually going to be above suspended ceilings. So it's going to be relatively simple. It's going to be a case of just kind of fishing it through the suspended ceiling. But how do we get up to the ceiling in the first place? Well, this is where we use something called conduit, which basically makes electrical cabling look quite nice and tasty. So it's a metal version and it's sort of like uh, Meccano for electricians. I started by cutting a bit of conduit to size with the world's smallest hacksaw and then I threaded that piece of conduit. And now if you see on the top of the enclosure, well there's a big hole. And then we're going to use these conduit fittings in this hole that I've drilled at the top of the enclosure uh, to kind of feed it up to the ceiling. So this is where I plan on putting the buzzer. So in this part of the building we've got the ghastly suspended ceiling. And there's nothing above us so it doesn't matter if we poke a tiny little hole in it for some conduit to go through and then we're going to pop it up here and lovely jubbly. And this is what's great about conduit, because I've threaded it, you can literally just thread it in. How good is that? Now you've got a really long soup spoon. <laughs> well, you can't find this fitting in screw fix, that's for sure. <laughs> I need to route this about 12 meters that way through the ceiling. Mm. Like everything, that was a little bit more of a faff than I was expecting because I had to harness it going through and stuff. And now we're over at the other section. I've done exactly the same on this side. You can see there's a box right here. It's a little bit sparse on the front. I'm probably gonna add more to this. Right now it's just got a jack socket coming out of it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire that jack socket to the speakers in this area. So people in here can hear the rude messages that people are sending from the Morse code machine. Right, I'm gonna go over to the Morse code machine and we're gonna see if this thing actually works. <laughs> right, that is great. It needs turning down a bit and a bit of EQing, but we're on to a winner. So that's it for this video. Obviously it needs a tiny bit more work, but uh, you know, it'll come with time. I'm gonna put a Morse code chart on both sides so people can decipher what is being said. I had an initial plan of making the Morse code machine trigger synthesizers over there, but that's because I didn't know whether the original oscillator was still functioning. But much to my amazement, it still does work. That's not the end of that idea though, because obviously we can put it into an envelope follower and that will be able to trigger a synthesizer. So not all is lost. Now all of the boring stuff is done with the museum, you'll be seeing a lot more videos regarding this uh, whilst I'm getting it ready for who knows when it's gonna open because uh, you know, you know the world, don't you? The Museum of Everything Else has its own YouTube channel, so there's a lot of other videos on the museum there, so the links are below. And if you want to support this rather crazy venture, then please go and check out my Patreon as that supports this crazy endeavor and the machines that are inside it. And needless to say, there's a lot of extra information, videos, sample packs, live streams, this, that, and the other over there. So do go and check that out if you're interested. And yeah, until next time, I've been Look Mum No Computer. Don't forget to subscribe, maybe learn Morse code, and don't be scared to try it. <laughs>